to the Rick and Ron Pro Pod. I can't even say it anymore. Podcast. It's uh, good to be with you again, Rick. How you doing? Good. Excellent. Yeah. Whole new topic we got going. Uh, I have a shout out first to uh, Caleb Cameron. Okay. He's a, a young uh, single adult that started his own company called Love Ethics, and you can look at his good works, all his videography and his editing and his production at Love ethics.com the end of the love is shared with the beginning of ethics meaning the one letter e I try to visually put that in your mind and he has done some super work including some stuff for me to try to communicate vision through through videography and um, yeah really interesting stuff that, that he has shown me apparently he's um, he's done some very good work not only in the videography department but also for uh, for scripting with uh, Johnny Tata Erickson and her ministry. And so a shout out to Caleb Cameron and his work under the title Love Ethics. I met Caleb it was about a month and a half ago and saw some of the work that he did. Very cool. Very cool. Very talented young man. Very good. Rick, um, I gotta be honest, the last couple of days when I was thinking about the topic right. for this uh, particular podcast, uh, a couple of words that were sticking out to me were one was, was attitudes, um, the other one was behaviors, and I know there was a word that kind of stuck out to you as well. Yeah. Expectations. Expectations. Uh, thought a lot about it. Hard one to nail down when we, uh, when we thought about the story that's coming up here in a minute, and, uh, and yeah. just what would you title it? It, it uh, it's quite something. Well, and I, f I find it, and we'll probably touch on this a little bit later too, uh, the depth of, of to where this, this could go. Um, however, uh, we're going to let the, the parable uh, be told, and we'll see where it goes from there. Here we go. It's a grandfather and his grandson sitting down on the porch of their farm, a little ways out of this nearby town, and up comes a car, and there's a gentleman in there who gets out and asks for directions as to how to get to this nearby town that apparently he's moving to. And he... Uh, gets the directions and as he heads back a few steps towards his car he turns to the grandfather and the grandson on the porch and says so what what kind of town is this like hmm. well, I'm from a, a small town where I've lived a couple of years and it's been a, a rough ride I mean no one really showed much love it seemed to have a poor attitude and uh, the community was uh, less than desirable what kind of community is this place that I'm moving to, to which the grandfather replied, pretty much the same. The man said, thank you for the directions and headed into the town where he was about to move. And it wasn't uh, too long after that and the grandfather and the grandson still sitting on the porch, maybe an hour later, had another car drive up. Hmm. Similar situation, a lady came out and, and needed directions to the town and so the grandfather gave directions to the town and uh, she too says what what are the people like in this town mm. I, uh, I'm looking at living there and uh, she said you know I'm from a small community that I've lived in for quite a few years and uh, they're beautiful people there we always watched out for each other took care spoke nicely and she went on and, and said of wonderful pleasant things about her former community that she had just left and and, and she asked that same question so what are the people like here to which the grandfather replied, pretty much the same. The lady stepped into her car and headed to the nearby town, and as the dust settled, the, the young grandson turned to his grandfather and said, Granddad, how come you, how come you told him two different answers about the town? To which the grandfather replied, uh, I, I didn't actually. I told them the same answer. It's the attitude that they take in that will make all the difference to the community in which they live. The first time I read this story, I was blown away by the simplicity of it, for one. And on the other hand, the depth to which you yeah. can dive into this, this complex moment. Yeah. yeah. Right? If you sit there, uh, you got to say that this actually goes quite deep. I mean, uh, this is something for everybody to take some time and ponder, except for me, of course. 
<laughs> but that's the attitude we have. We, Absolutely. We hear about this story. Actually, I remember someone telling me about a, a wonderful sermon in which the pastor's preaching about uh, forgiveness and you need to confess your sins. And the guy in the pew said, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same kind of a feel to it. But uh, we all need to ponder and, and, and check in. What struck me, and and um, I'm not sure if this is you feel the same way, but, but but let me just throw this out to you. What struck me is is these first moments, these first moments of conversations that take place between people. There are many people who serve in the service industry, and I think of people, for example, like bank bank tellers, who receive the customer coming in and can be either greeted with a smile and a service that goes far and beyond what ex is expected, right. which then the person or the customer leaving feels valued, cared for, serviced well. Mm. What happens if that's turned around? And which one do you favor? We know the answer. Right, absolutely. And so that, that begs the question then, when we think about behaviors, when we think about attitudes, when we think about expectations, uh, if we use those words, and there's probably others we can throw into the batch, mm -hmm. um, how do we approach those situations in our lives when we're entering the new town? Uh, I uh, I do a lot with uh, neighboring, of course. Yeah. That's my big role, and I uh, I know that uh, there was one particular seminar that I was leading with the uh, family community services in a, in a small city close by here. And in in the conversation, there was about uh, well, a nice group of people, uh, you know, it was uh, 12, 15 people sitting around the table that I had the privilege to speak at in terms of all the things that I covered. It was just a general introduction. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I came across was how we are to treat uh, our neighbors. And, and then I spoke about, um, you know, loving them like with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. There's this one lady who actually interrupted and said, well, uh, not me. And I said, Okay, uh, let's move on to the next point. You know, I listened to her story, but she kept coming back to say, uh, uh, "There's no no way that uh, that we should be expected to to be that generous or forgiving or whatever word you want to use to our neighbors." And obviously, she was uh, you know, telling us about how she had been uh, you know betrayed or hmm. had broken trust right. amongst her neighbors. Right. And uh, I, I guess I I finally had to stop. My, my teaching at the seminar to deal with her specifically because she wouldn't let it go. And I, I said to her, you know, someone has to start loving unconditionally. Someone has to start forgiveness. But getting back to the parable at hand, I suppose that maybe the gentleman that moved into the town first or, or whoever we're talking about with, with, with their attitude or lack of it may have just never been taught or told or had the experience. So this family community services lady that kept poking at me during my seminar as I was trying to go through my, my list of things and wouldn't let that thing go about forgiveness, probably didn't experience forgiveness to the point where she was able to, to bring that to her neighbors. And I found that uh, something I wasn't going to get into at the time because she was taking up enough time of the whole seminar. But it's part of the story where we don't know um, people's backgrounds and what they're capable because of their experiences of being brought up, right? So, yeah, it's hard for a person to forgive someone or have the proper attitude if they were under circumstances in their upbringing where they perhaps never been taught and and demonstrated what that uh, what that's like. Do you think sometimes um, we have a hard time to be empathetic? because we haven't been taught how to to think empathetically. I know it's probably not a word, but but what I'm, why I'm saying that is is cuz I wonder even, you know, in our ministry context, one of the things that you and I have uncovered with doing youth ministry is there's such deep um relevant important stories that our students and new, young adults are going through mm -hmm. that if we haven't taken the time to listen to them, to uncover some of those behavioral, maybe those expected, I don't know, entitlement things, whatever we want to name that, that gentleman that we were right. just talking about, um, hadn't been taught how to love. I don't know. Well, I remember um, having been involved with the uh, youth and young adults' lives. The question of how many of them heard their parents right. uh, say, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. 
you know, or or have um, asked for forgiveness from their children, you know, uh, start a conversation in a room or end one <laughs> because it's so heavy and deep again regarding the attitudes that uh, we help formulate in, in a child's life. Well, ex well, exactly. And, and it makes me think a little bit about, um, you and I studied the Deuteronomy 6 text, which talks about, you know, the Shema, and then goes into this, this practical application for people. When we think about church, mm -hmm. love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Uh, these commands that I give you today, impress them on your children. Right. Talk about them when you sit at home and walk, when you walk along the road. Yeah. When you get up, when you lie down, those kind of things. It, it's those teaching moments that you're talking about there. Yeah. On the fly. Right. Off the cuff. Right. And we don't know what that looks like all the time, but we have to be willing and ready to engage in those conversations in some ways, because I think they're 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 watching us. They're they're trying to figure out how do we do this in life, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm wondering about this this one driver saying, I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. Let's flip it around, yeah. um, argue it from the other way. Yeah. Some people perhaps are brought up in, uh, in a healthy life and um, know how to forgive, love, and, and have a proper attitude. But they still think um, um, very little about the impact that they have, right. uh, not only on their own lives, but on the lives of those around. Uh, I can't help but think of couple of circumstances when I was in a church service and then there's that one guy that's real sensitive material yeah. uh, because some of us have been through this where that one person stood up and walked out now I'm sure he had good reasons and I'm sure he didn't have good reasons we could argue that to death but he held the whole congregation captive and I don't think he knew the power that that he was um, exhorting that's the right yeah. word over the all the people in that church that day, when uh, when he kind of took upon uh, it himself to, to to make a stand and and leave the service, uh, those kind of things always make me think about. <laughs> do you know what you did when you left? Right. Do you know how powerful your actions were and and your attitude? Do you know what that did to all those people that you walked away from, even if? you had some good rationale. It still uh, holds people hostage in that circumstances, but it makes a difference. And like the guy who has such a negative attitude from his former community, I guess he, he's going to this new community with that same attitude and doesn't have a skippy clue. So, so what do you do with that? So one, one thing that I would push back on right now is, is, is it not then our responsibility to help inform him of his attitudes? Right. I'm not sure. I'd just drive over them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll go in a different direction now. Yeah. We won't drive over the guy. No. no. But but I mean, really. Um, so s some of us might think that yeah, maybe our role is to to let them know. But is it? Yeah. You know, speaking of uh, of attitudes and, and that whole church story. You know, people come into a church. Uh, and they have that same kind of issue because it's a community. And so this right. that story could very much apply to two people who come into the same church. Yeah. And the last one had a wonderful experience. And how powerful is that then in terms of who we are as people that uh, hold up the light of Christ? Yeah. Or not. You know, I'm wondering if that's related to relational capital, right? Yeah. Right. You know the person. You have a relationship with that person. You have trust and opportunity then to... To walk together in those really tough areas. Does this have anything to do with movies like uh, oh, yes. the hype, and then you go in with the expectations, and then sometimes you're disappointed. Ah, oh, that so was not a good movie. I thought it'd be better. And then there's the one that you hear nothing about, but you got nothing better to do tonight, so you go out and check it out. Yeah, and it's like, whoa, that was incredible. Absolutely, it does. Plays a little role in this. Absolutely, absolutely. And and sports, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, we could we could talk about that too, and, and and it applies there as well, in terms of um, what's my role and how does that fit in terms of the team mentality. Mm -hmm. um, so again, expectations, attitudes, behaviors. Um, what is the role, and how does that fit for me? Right, because that attitude of the player right. on the team. Need we say more? Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. 
do you have any books, uh, re readings, uh, things that you've you've run across that you think might be uh, helpful for this topic? Uh, no, I think sometimes uh, some assessments are good. Um, you know, we have those personality assessments. Yeah. Um, I, I uh, I'm fond of some more than others, but uh, I think sometimes there's windows into your soul. Yeah. It helps uh, maybe understand your your direction and, and your tra tra trajectory. <laughs> now I can't talk. It's a hard it, word. It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those are some of the things. So not necessarily a, a book, yeah. um, but uh, there are some things like that that are tools. And of course, uh, psychologists, I think uh, they've always gotten a bum rap or counseling because yeah. you got to have problem before you go see one. And if you see one, that means you have problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't think that's necessarily true. I think sometimes just like your physical checkup with your doctor, it's good to go to a psychologist and say, hey, uh, maybe, uh, you know, kind of give you the rundown of, of where I'm at, and that could be helpful. So a couple things that I ran across today. Um, this was a book that was recommended to me as I was kind of processing transition in my own life, and it's called uh, Critical Conversations. And again, it looks at some of those tough moments in our lives, right? What, what, what am I bringing to the table, and how am I approaching things, and what might be ways in which I can just kind of monitor myself in terms of how I'm dealing with critical conversations. And so this was a really, really interesting book. Um, Self-reflective, oh my goodness. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was really, really You're good. You're working on your attitude, right? I totally am. <laughs> it's so good. And then my daughter, uh, who I love, love dearly, and both her and I are wired very similarly. Uh, God created us with some similar kind of characteristics, and that's not a bad thing. And she and I are both introverts, and so she recommended this book to me um, called Quiet, uh, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. Oh my goodness, it applies to me. Pretty catchy. Yeah, you bet. So those are the two uh, resources that I brought with me. There's one uh, that I wanted to share with you and just very briefly touch on because it's been impactful for me. Let's reflect. Yeah, and it was uh, a book called The Way of the Shepherd. Oh. And written by Dr. Kevin Lehman. And there's yeah. some incredible um, moments in which he uncovers how we, as people, um, not necessarily um, are, are observed, but, but how can we then lead when we're called into these places of leadership and use these kinds of pictures, like attitudes, behaviors, expectations, uh, to help us figure out how to lead well. Right. Uh, so deeply, deeply helpful, deeply reflective, and... Um, yeah, so those are three resources. And generally speaking, I, I love uh, the story, but I more so uh, parables are powerful yeah. just because they can go in so many different directions and they speak powerfully. And I believe that's why Jesus so often used those stories. As someone pointed out, you can't argue against someone's story. Um, but it, it, gets to, uh, it gets to the heart of the matter, or it can, if the story is uh, told well. And so knowing that, um, let the story renumerate inside of you and may perhaps use the story as a mirror that you can hold up against yourself and say, huh, who am I in this story? Right. Like the prodigal son, you know, you pick your character. So are you the guy in the car, the girl in the car? Are you the grandfather or the son? Excellent question. So that's your challenge. Um, who am I in the story? And uh, how does that impact me? That's all for now. Thanks, Rick. I gotta go.